if you have persecution fears of utilizing your magic or you feel that you have fairy lineages or you're a channeler of their healing energies, I'm going to share something that I found inside of my client's Akashic Records in case it unlocks and activates something for you as well. Now, before we get into this story, we need to make sure that we are in a good mental place to hear this because it might be very triggering. It has to do with some scary things that happened in a different lifetime. Sometimes it's good to bring those things to the light so that we can heal from them, but I always like to say that for your discernment before we get into it. You can always save this post and listen to it later if you want. So her questions, my clients, before we got on together, the notes that she left me were wanting to uncover blocks, what modality she should be focusing on to help other people and herself, improving her communication with animals because she had actually bought a farm and was doing equine healing with other people. Uh, she's also a Reiki master and a crystal healer. However, she wasn't utilizing her gifts currently and just felt this really intensive resistance against it. And so she was curious, you know, what is causing these impediments? And so when I went into her energy field before we connected, I was speaking to her higher self. I saw this woman running around and she was saying, my scripts, my scripts. And I said, hey, everything is okay. Let's take a breath. And she said, who are you? <laughs> And I explained, I said, hey, my name is Sage. I'm here to help you figure out what's going on with your spiritual gifts. And I showed her kind of like this scroll or a script. And she said, okay. <laughs> and she was really cute. She had this big mushroom hat on. She was giving very much fairy energy, but something wasn't quite right. It was off, but I just went with it anyway. Where we were was inside of this cottage. And it had a lot of shelves with all these trinkets on it, uh, doodads. It was very small and cramped. And I was looking around and I said, why are you in here? Generally, fairies do not like to be in confined spaces. They like, like big open ones or being outside. She said, I've got to figure it out. And I said, figure what out? And she said, what I'm good at. And I said, okay. And there was papers everywhere <laughs> and what that was symbolic of is my client in this uh time trying to learn all these different modalities and nothing ever feeling like it was sticking and things were just off and so it was causing her to feel very overstimulated <laughs> and not really taking inspired action so i said to her energy body how about we go to a new environment <laughs> when that's a little bit more expansive and she looked around and she got kind of nervous about leaving her space which is symbolic of stepping outside of our comfort zone and I said I promise it'll be fun she said mm, okay <laughs> and so I asked her higher self where she wanted me to take her because obviously she wasn't feeling super safe and secure about moving and she said why don't you take her to the uh, cathedral and I haven't been there in a really long time. This cathedral in particular is in one of the dragon dimensions. Very beautiful, massive. <laughs> and so we went there and she was looking up at the ceiling and she was like, wow, because it's ridiculously high ceilings. And what that was representing was expansiveness, moving outside of your current state of being and your current identity. I said, do you want to go someplace even cooler? Not that that place wasn't cool, but <laughs> she said, no, I think I want to stay here. Where I was going to take her was a unicorn crystal palace, which is even bigger than the cathedral, but she was already feeling nervous about moving in the first place. And so that is representative of being okay with stepping outside of ourselves a little bit, but not at an exponential rate. When I asked her, can you tell me why you're feeling blocked with your spiritual gifts? She started to get really panicked and triggered and started, you know, getting uh, her central nervous system activated. And I said, hey, let's take a breath. I said, you don't have to tell me what's going on. I would love to know so that I can support you with it. Otherwise, I would be happy to stay in here with you and we can hang out. It's okay. <laughs> and I have found in clients' records, especially if we are dealing with a different lifetime that experienced something really traumatic, or if you have inner children that you're talking to within them, if you give them the option of saying, hey, we don't have to talk about it. I would love to do that with you and I want you to feel safe and secure, but I'm also okay with just being here and existing with you. <laughs>
oftentimes they'll say, okay, I'm ready to talk about it now because they don't want to be forced into something. They want it to be their choice on their terms. So if we can do that, it creates a much safer, sacred space for them in order to heal. And I told her, you don't have to tell me what happened. You can also show me what happened. You don't even have to be there to look at the memory. I can see that if you allow me to go deeper into your energy field and my higher self will stay here with you in the cathedral while I do that deep dive. And she liked that idea better. And so I said, okay, give me your hands and close your eyes. And that's when I went deeper into my client's field. And this is where the traumatic thing happened. Okay, I was looking at a different lifetime of hers where she was a fairy and somebody was ripping her wing off. So I jumped into that memory, into that time and space, those energetic coordinates, and I looked at her and I said, hey, and I was explaining who I was. I said, can I take you somewhere where we can talk and we can go heal? And she said, yes. And I took her to this place. It's called the Celestial Healing Pools. There's beautiful waterfalls everywhere. Nobody is there. It's just us. <laughs> so she could feel safe. And I was trying to get her to talk about what happened. But she was crying so much. And I said, would it help you if I told you that I could heal your wings? And she said, you can do that. And I said, absolutely. However... I'm going to need you to show me the memory or tell me what happened because of the intricacies of that level of healing. I need to know in order to do it properly and also help you in your timeline heal and remove that trauma that you have experienced. She told me that her father had actually been the one to rip off both of her wings. And that's where she started getting upset again, which understandably. And I said, hey, remember, we're not there right now. I have taken you out of that timeline so that we can look at this objectively and that we can heal together, but we're the only persons here at the Celestial Healing Pools. And that helped her feel a lot more safe because this is, if you do soul retrievals, when you're in there with different timelines or inner children, that trauma is still very apparent and a living breathing thing within their system oh it's 11 11 on my phone so you have to remind them while you're doing soul retrievals we're just looking at a memory i have moved us up out of that time and space okay your parents are not here your uh, abusive partners are not here whatever they have experienced that happened in the past is not happening in real time that soothed her and i asked her what her name was and it was a, a nickname, like a shortened version of her full. And when she said it, it made her incredibly sad. And I said, why is it making you feel that way? And she said, because her father always used to yell at her and use that nickname. And I said, well, how about we go by a completely different name? <laughs> a magical one, whatever you want that makes you feel good. And she told me what it was, and when she said it, it brought this big smile to her face, and I said, I love that, okay? I'm going to call you that from now on. I asked her, why did he do that? Why did he pull your wings off? And she was about 17 or 18 when that happened, relatively, okay? <laughs> That's a very human uh, timeline span. She was being perceived to me as 17 or 18 years old, but you know, fairies live a lot longer, but we'll just say a teen fairy. She said that her father was incredibly jealous of her wings, and I asked if she could show them to me, and instead of regular fairy wings, or what we conceive as that, they were these beautiful, beautiful uh, butterfly wings. And they were massive and iridescent, so colorful and just vibrant and luminescent. I was like, oh my gosh. They looked very different from the other fairies that lived in their tribe or their community. And so she stuck out very, you know, apparently. And so her father didn't feel like that she deserved having them. And so he stripped them from her. I said, well, what happened to your father? Because I can see that he was not punished for that or he got reprimanded. And she said, I didn't give uh, anyone the opportunity to do that because I ended up running away from home. And that is a whole other trauma wound in and of itself. After that, she was ostracized by different societies because they were looking at her like, 
what kind of fairy are you if you don't even have wings? And then she was having a very difficult time communicating what had happened to her. So it was kind of just swept under the rug because she didn't have the tools and resources in order to seek the support that she needed. And I said, okay, here's what we can do <laughs> now that I know the full scope. I have this tech that I can put on your spine, on your back, and it will heal and regrow your fairy wings because that is part of her core soul essence, is part of her lineages. And I said, do you want the wings that you had previously, your butterfly wings? And kind of that she wanted them, but also that was feeling like it might be a little bit traumatic. And so I said, you can have uh, celestial wings if you want, or actually any type of wings. And I talked to her higher self and I said, this tech can also customize and so she can have dragon looking fairy wings <laughs> or what, whatever her fancy and imagination is and we'll get back to that later about how that's going to help my client in this incarnation <laughs> but she was so incredibly excited and i said now would you be open to helping my client in this incarnation re-remember what it means to be a full-fledged fairy because my client in this one is also a fairy okay that is part of the bigger schematics of your soul that is also why I felt that something was off when I first went into her energy field and was talking to the version of her with the ma mushroom hat that fairy version of her did not have wings and I thought that was very odd like where are they it's because of what happened in this different incarnation. She said, deal, I would love to come and help her. <laughs> and this is where soul retrievals are really just so incredibly amazing <laughs> because there can be something really horrific that happened in a different timeline. And we, in this lifetime, can invite them to move into our time and space, their consciousness, part of their uh, soul fragments. And they can come and do this really deep karmic soul healing with us and they can teach us things and we can teach them things. I asked her different incarnation, what are the trauma wounds that occurred in your lifetime that are rolling over and affecting my client and this one? And she said, fear of outshining others. That's why her wings got stripped in the first place. Being cut off from certain aspects of your magic. So she had to essentially go within and hide uh, from society and herself and never really felt like she could fully express what she was able to do with her gifts and abilities um, because she had that low self-concept. And when I asked my client, do you feel like there has been something within you that has been lost and you have not been able to have access to it and that's what's causing a lot of this overstimulation of you trying to find all these different modalities that fit your archetype and they and they're not quite right and she was like oh my god yes we have the fear of being ostracized from our family because that actually happened to her in that lifetime where she had to run away for her own safety and that can translate over to losing people that are close to us because we are stepping into higher consciousness or into our spiritual gifts or our magic or, or opening a woo-woo business, <laughs> right? And people not understanding why we're going down these paths. And fear of being exposed was one that she was experienced that my client is as well. What I was explaining to her in this lifetime is you are a fairy healer, okay? You're already a crystal healer, a Reiki master. <laughs> you work with horses with healing other people. There's a reason that you are drawn to all of those things. And as I started describing what it means to be a fairy, what that feels like, what you're able to do, she's like, oh my gosh, this resonates. This is why I have chosen these paths. <laughs> I said, yes. And I told her, you're already a fairy channeler, a fairy healer. You can tell people that right now if you want to. And she said, well, I don't feel that I have those tools and abilities in order to say that to people. And I said, how are you, how is somebody going to tell a fairy that they're not a fairy healer? <laughs> it's not like you're learning to be one. You are one. It's part of your core essence. Some benefits of uh, being a fairy is <laughs> you're really good with astral traveling because they do not work 
the same in time and space. Uh, the physics are different in the fairy dimensions. And I was explaining to her that when you are a Reiki master and you understand that you also have these fairy abilities, when I first started doing chakra scans for people, it blasted into this whole other type of experience <laughs> for myself and other people where I was connecting into different incarnations and timelines and with their inner children. It was really expansatory work because I wasn't moving through the frames of reality at um, this more dense rate. It, it was just very easy for me to access those things, but that's because I have spent a lot of time in places that the physics are not the same as here on the 3D human plane. So I told her that she would be really good at that. And she's like, oh my gosh, I have been astral traveling all of my life. <laughs> Like, yeah, that makes sense because <laughs> you're naturally good at it. You can talk to nature and be a plant, tree, communicator, speak with the elements, uh, animals. Uh, obviously, she had gotten into working with horses. i uh, really good with kids. She loves kids. I said, well, you're a fairy. It's so much easier to talk to animals and plants and kids because they're just coming from this really pure place of being. They don't have as many like filter lenses and distortions and, and programming and all those different things. You're really good at helping people lift their frequency. Very cheerful and bubbly and positive and you want everybody to feel that way around you. And I said on the other side of that though, <laughs> when you make a fairy upset, then it is intense. <laughs> okay, everybody is affected around you. <laughs> like they are feeling your rage <laughs> within you and it really pushes people away from you and out of your field. Fairies have this really wide scape of emotions that they feel. Uh, giving people fairy blessings, this is one of my favorites. Part of our magic again is uplifting others. And when you place energy and intention on something, you get more of it and it expands at a really magnetic level. And so something that I love to do is when somebody makes me happy, or you know, does something uh, that makes me laugh or brings me joy, um, compliments me. I really take that to heart, and I look at that person and I say, "I hope you have a super magical day today." <laughs> and in my mind, I am sending them the best intentions that something really wonderful and miraculous happens to them, so that they get that energy exchange back as something really positive happening in their life. And what I was explaining to my client is when you start doing that uh, conscientiously, and uh, the more that you do it, the more real you see how that is. The person's whole entire light field <laughs> just sparkles and you can see their vibration raising and that like there's gears turning of like, oh, something good is happening to me today. Something else I was explaining is that when you have fairy lineages and you remember a lot of those things about yourself, it can be very difficult sometimes to be here on the human plane because the physics don't work the same <laughs> in other dimensional places. But there's so much that Earth has to offer for us, especially with the beautiful, beautiful nature scapes that we have. I was telling her that once you lock on to that fairy energy within you, all of the BS that happens here <laughs> doesn't really matter as much to you because you feel so empowered and you start really placing your energy and intention on experiencing more magic in your day-to-day -day life. And you can move yourself into a completely different reality scape based on the uh, magic that you hold within yourself. But you've got to latch onto that. And one of the ways that you can do that is listening to fairy meditations, fairy Reiki, fairy light language, looking at pictures on Pinterest, creating fairy houses that you can put in your home or you can put outside in your garden, listening to chimes, <laughs> music. Uh, getting little trinkets and little doodads. <laughs> they love those as well. But really imbuing your energy field with as much fairy content as you can, whether it's fantasy books or movies or TV shows. Now, there is a lot of negative rhetoric about fairies if you are going on social media or doing research. I was telling her that we need to, one, stop listening to that 
all together, okay? Because they're talking about your people, first of all, in like this incredibly negative lens. And just like with anything in life, there are people doing great things and people not doing great things, okay? But we cannot blanket statement over a whole group of persons. Are there fairies that are doing a fairy thing? Sure, <laughs> but so are any other type of elemental beings or humans, right? So we need to change our filter lens and be consuming things that are very positive and loving and painting them in a good light because as a fairy herself, she can be a person or you, if you have fairy lineages, that rewrites those narratives and helps us be seen in a better light. I would love to hear what your biggest takeaway was from this message. If you feel that you have fairy lineages, if fear of exposure or persecution or being ostracized, if those are things that you're currently working through, if you have questions of your own, if you're wanting to learn more about soul retrievals and how to access these planes within yourself, your inner children, your different incarnations to do very expansatory work, you can check out the Akashic Shaman Mentorship. You can find that in my bio or in the comments. I also offer individual sessions, Akashic Record Readings, and I have a workshop that is coming up on November the 22nd. It is titled Reclaim Your Magic. It's gonna be great. We're gonna go over so many things that might be creating impediments in your energetic field that is not allowing you to have full access to your magic. And so I would love to see you there as well. Again, you can go to the link in my bio or check the comments and I hope you have a super magical day.